Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. David here, hope you're having a great day. I'm sure you guys are familiar with our most popular video, Stop the HPF Madness. It's got almost 350,000 views. 99% of the people is grateful for that video for explaining a very simple concept, but very important that apparently nobody, nobody touched on before. And it's a video that is one of the most talked about, one of the most commented on, and we have a lot of new subscribers watching it. So in this video, I wanna do a couple of things summarize and clarify a couple of points that are in that video that few people seem to misinterpret still and then i want to reply a couple of questions and touch on a subject that keep popping up in the comment section of that video and the subject is asymmetrical waveform ndc offset because in that video when i show the waveform and the phase shift that happens when when applying the hpf filter phase shift that is absolutely normal when you apply you know a filter of any kind this is the first thing that is absolutely normal it's nothing strange you know that phase shift but some people says oh the waveform is asymmetrical you need dc offset and that is very wrong let me tell you why first of all nowadays it's extremely rare that you will need the c offset processing on any track even the most basic consumer converter has filters that take care of that the c problems happen for an electrical or a design problem in your gear causing a signal not to average itself at zero. It has nothing to do with asymmetrical waveform, and we will see that asymmetrical waveforms are absolutely normal. What you will see when you have a DC problem, when you need DC offset, is a symmetrical waveform, which center is not aligned at zero, but is tilted, you know, up or down. That is a sign that you have a problem in your recording chain. A symmetrical waveform are absolutely normal. Trumpet, trombone, synths, baritone vocals. If you look at those waveforms, they are all asymmetrical. And asymmetrical waveforms very rarely are a problem. Yes, they can eat headroom and you can correct asymmetrical waveform to gain headroom. And maybe we will see that in another video. You need an all pass filter or a phase rotator to do that. But it has nothing to do with DC offset. This is how DC offset looks like. And these tracks that I'm showing you here are asymmetrical and it's absolutely normal. They don't need DC offset. They don't have a DC problem. Let's take a listen to that trombone, for example. This is just how a trombone track looks like. It's asymmetrical, but you can see the center is aligned as zero. This is absolutely normal. Now, you could use a phase rotator if you want to be anal about it, but very rarely something like this is a problem in a mix. Let's take a listen and a look at this other one. Let me zoom out. This is a synth sound. Again, is a symmetrical, but you can see the center is aligned as zero. Okay, this is even better. This is a mono synth. Look at the track. This is absolutely asymmetrical. But it has nothing to do with the C offset, and I want to prove it to you. So this is the track as is. And this is a DC offset removal tool from Pro Tools. If I render it, nothing happens. <laughs> so if you had a DC problem, applying DC offset removal would remove, you know, DC offset, you would see something. This, it doesn't happen here. It's not happening. Nothing happens. Even in this track too, we apply, nothing changes. Okay. This one, same thing. Okay, 
Now let's take a look at a track that had a problem with DC and DC offset was applied. You can see the top track is a fairly symmetrical waveform, but its center is not aligning at zero. It sits on top of that black line. The bottom track is after DC offset processing. So you can see when you have a DC problem, if you apply DC offset, it will change how it looks. This is another example. The bottom track has a problem, is a fairly symmetrical waveform, but it just sits on top of the red line. Top track is when DC offset has been applied. So you can see the center now aligns at zero. Again, not what happens with normal asymmetrical waveform. So I hope this clarify all the comments and all the question about DC offset in the HPF madness video when you see HPF being applied on the track and the phase shifting. That is absolutely normal. I just wanted people to be aware of it because there are a couple of situations in which if you don't know that, you will run into a problem that you will not know how to solve. And this is a chance for me to also clarify a couple of things that still get misinterpreted by few people, but still, you know, we have a lot of new subscribers, so it might be useful. One of the purposes of that video was to aware people of the phase shift of any filter for some particular situations. For example, multi-miked sources like snare, top and bottom, kick, in and out, two microphones on a guitar, two microphones on a cabinet, two microphones on anything. If you position the microphones in a way that they sound good together, okay? And then when you go mixing, you HPF, you high pass filter one of them, let's say kick in and kick out, you worked to position the mics in a way that they sound good together. If you high pass one of them individually, that will change the phase correlation between the two mics. And of course it will change the sound. And all the time that you spent positioning the two mics so that they were sounding good together, you will lose that if you high pass them individually. If you bust them together on an aux channel and you high pass that, and you high pass the two mics as they were one, that phase correlation will remain intact. Same for two mics on a guitar cabinet. If you position the two mics, and a series on recording guitars is coming up, by the way, so we'll see that. If you position two mics so that they sound good together, and then you go high passing one of them, or EQ one of them, it will change the phase correlation. So the point of the video was never don't high pass, which is something I probably repeat 10 times in the video, but it was when you have a multi-mic source, bus the two mics, the multiple mics together into an aux track and high pass that as one so you don't lose the phase correlation. And another very important thing, another common situation, uh, in which you need to be aware of the phase shift. It's something that is in the follow-up video, but that video didn't get as many views, so I'm gonna repeat that here. When you parallel a signal, it's very much like having two mics. In this case, the phase correlation is even more strict because it's a copy, it's the same exact track. If you parallel something for compression, for saturation, and you high pass that parallel track, that will change phase correlation with the dry original track. And the phase shift in this case will create a null at the corner frequency. Check out the follow-up video if you want to know more about this. But to give you a practical example, let's say you have a kick drum or a bass, you want to parallel compress that. And when you add the parallel compression, your mix has too much low end, okay? We are talking about kick and bass, so that might be the case. If that happens, do not high pass the parallel compression channel. High pass the source, because if it's a send, it will remove low end from both. If you high pass the parallel channel, the phase correlation between the two tracks, the dry and the, the parallel compression, will change and will create a null. So if you run into this problem, always high pass the source that is going to parallel channels, okay? This is another of those situations in which you 
you know, need to be aware of what happens when you use an EQ. But in conclusion, I want to say that once again, I never said in the video, don't use HPF. Uh, I actually said the opposite several times. Use HPF every time and any time you need it. Just be aware of what happens when you do it, especially in those specific situations. So I hope this video was useful. I hope it clarified the DC offset thing and the asymmetrical waveform. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment down below. If you like the video, please leave us a like. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and see you next time.